Before we begin, I want to address something related to my Issue 40 review. At the very end, I made a joke about Tango casually tossing Orbine Cubot into the water. Well, if you look at the bottom left of the final page, you can see the two actually in the water. And they're surprisingly buoyant. I like to thank everyone who pointed this out to me in the comments. Just another example of me missing something while trying to get the review out in a timely manner. Anyway, on with today's review. Welcome everyone to my review of IDW Sonic Issue 41. Yes, so soon after Issue 40. I said in one of my discussion videos that throughout June, IDW Publishing would be releasing Sonic comic material each week, and that includes two regular issues. It seems IDW is keeping to their schedule so far. Ian Flynn returns to the main book with a new story arc which is a follow-up to a plot point introduced during the Metal Virus Saga, The Deadly Six on the Main World. Before we recap their journey so far, I'm going to let you know there will be spoilers from here on out. The Deadly Six were brought into Sonic's world, thanks to Dr. Starlight and his Warping Gem, as a means to get the Zombots under control. He thought he could control them through the Cacophonic Conch, but unfortunately, he lacked Eggman's lung capacity. The Zeddy took the opportunity to hijack Eggman's entire operation and used the Zombots to take revenge against him and Sonic. They utilized the Chaos Emeralds to increase their powers and went off to terrorize the world. Thanks to the remaining heroes' efforts, they stole the Chaos Emeralds from the Zeddy and used them to save the world. Afterwards, the Zeddy, who were spread out all over the planet, either went into hiding or began searching for Zavok. Zavik himself was captured and imprisoned. For a little while. Dr. Starline, who at this point is no longer working for Eggman, broke Zavik and a few other criminals out of prison for his plan. Which involved getting a viable replacement for his warping gem. It was taken from him so it could be used for the aforementioned world saving. And ultimately, getting a new base for himself. Zavik wanted to use the chance to gain control of a good chunk of Eggman's forces which could be done at an egg hub, the same place Starline planned to acquire his base from. Eventually this alliance fell apart due to their backstabbing, and Eggman finding out about their activities and attacking the hub did not help. Although, Eggman only blamed Zavik because he's the one caught on the security camera, and the Zeddy was all alone when Eggman arrived at the hub to destroy it. He never knew it was all Starline's idea, and that Starline got what he wanted. While Zavik may not have gotten his Badnik army, he survived Eggman's attack, and with the help of the last Badnik from the hub, he heads out to find his brethren. We begin with Sonic and Eggman facing each other in Winterberg, while the former does his wisecracking. Ah, must be a Wednesday for them. Actually, the reason Eggman's at the village is because he's hunting down the Zeddy before they become a real problem. He's not wrong. He learned about Zabbik surviving the Egg Hub attack, and is worried they'll get revenge. Don't know why he waited until now to start tracking them down, but whatever. That worry is justified as hidden nearby, Master Zik observes the fight. He finds out Zabbik is out there, but hasn't found the others yet. So he leaves to do so because they need Zabbik's leadership, and he thinks he's wounded. Which is why he's taking so long. We then cut to Zavik still relying on the Hub Badnik to help him around. What is it with villains correctly predicting the actions of others in this issue? As Zavik takes a break, he reminisces about past events. Ever since encountering Sonic and Eggman, he's been suffering numerous defeats. All this does is motivate his need for revenge. Using the Badnik's ability to log onto the Eggnet, he starts looking for the closest of the towns where he sent the others, figuring they wouldn't stray too far from their targets. The first stop is Riverside, where Zaz tries and fails to catch a fish. Zavik arrives and rightfully calls him pathetic for not conquering the town. He orders Zaz to grab his moon mech and help wreck the place. And they do. Afterwards, Zavik forces the local doctor to patch him up so he can heal faster. Zaz then explains to Zavik that the restoration came along and undid all the damage he and the Zombots did to the town. 
The next stop is Vista View, the town Zomom tried to take over and eat everyone out of house and home. Now he's caged up with all this delicious food right in front of him, and he's only allowed to eat three meals a day. Yeah, this is torture to him. The townsfolk are happy the restoration fixed things up to before the metal virus showed up. Things are great around here. Congratulations, townsfolk. You just jinxed yourselves. Now pay the price. Zavik frees Zomom, and the big guy begins gorging. A Restoration security member destroys the Bannock before Zavik captures him. He forces information out of the guard, which boils down to the Restoration undo all the chaos and destruction, which the Zeti thrive on. Zavik's about to demonstrate this on the poor guy. We later see the three Zeti in the forest, continuing their search for the others. They don't have to go far as Master Zig arrives along with Xena and Zor. Now that the group's reunited, Zavik wants to finish attacking the remaining target towns. However, Master Zig points out that they're on their enemy's world, where they are outnumbered. Attacking towns in a set pattern would draw the Restoration's attention. This is when Zavik forms his plan. They will attack the next town, and when the Restoration notices a pattern, they'll send their forces to the other intended targets, leaving the headquarters in a weakened state for the Deadly Six to attack. In their view, no more Restoration, and the world's flung into chaos, just the way they want it. And so, they're off to cause mayhem at the next town. Like clockwork, the Restoration caught wind of the attacks, and brought in the Chaotix to help with the situation. Based on the previous Zeti attacks, they're able to predict the next targets, while unknowingly playing into the enemy's hands. Speaking of enemies, Sonic finishes his fight with Eggman by blowing up his Winterberg base, and Eggman flees, cursing at Sonic as always. Before Sonic can take a little break, he gets a call from Tails saying that the Deadly Six are on the move. They're either heading for Sunset City or Winterberg, and since Sonic's near the latter, he'll keep an eye for them there. And that's where the issue ends. The issue is mainly set up for the bigger conflict later on, and naturally the focus is on the Deadly Six, getting the group together again, and proving that they don't need Zombots to be dangerous. I mentioned in an earlier review that what made the Deadly Six, well, deadly, at least in the comics that is, is that they are attacking sapient beings. Don't get me wrong, attacking little critters on the Lost Hex is horrifying in its own right, but sapient victims are a whole new level of horrifying. It's also implied that they've killed some people based on what Zavik's about to do to that one restoration security guard and Jewel's dialogue when talking to the Chaotix. And let me remind you, this series has no problem showing us the concept of death. Even if the Deadly Six didn't kill everyone, many others were horribly injured. Take the attack on Orchardville, the place where Zor originally went, Zavik slammed two poor souls to the ground with a tree and adds to the pain by standing on it with them underneath. Ouch. And here is Xena punting a chow in that very same attack. That's just wrong. She's lucky Cream and her chow army aren't around. We get a bit more into the Zeddy's mindset, which is your typical pack mentality, explaining why some like Zaz cannot function without Zavik or Master Zik leading them, and the old, the strongest survive and the weak should be discarded thing. For the last one, I'm going by what Master Zik said about Zavik's possible situation, and that under normal circumstances, the weak should be left behind. Does this mean he would have resumed command of the Zeti in Zavik's absence? On a related note, Zavik was still injured from the events of Bad Guys until he got proper treatment. This means that the last few story arcs, which I remind you are Bad Guys, Child Races and Badnik Bases, and Test Run, happened in a relatively short amount of time. And they had to have happened in that order because Starline got his Tricor in Bad Guys and he used it in Chow Races. And Test Run establishes the new Restoration HQ, which will play a very important role in this arc. The Deadly Six's plan to destroy Restoration HQ is surprisingly competent. The reason they're doing this is, they see the Restoration as an affront to all they believe in. They represent chaos and despair, the Restoration represents order and hope. 
Ever since the Sonic Forces War, organizations like the Restoration and the Resistance before it were needed to help keep the world safe from threats. While it might be possible to revert to the days of just Sonic, Tails, and Amy, etc. being the only heroes on the scene, Sonic Forces, in the comic universe at least, changed things. It's basically escalation at this point. Despite the issue's darker nature, thanks to the Zeddy and their attacks, it still has some lighthearted moments. There's this bit of dark humor here when the Chaotix comment on the new headquarters. Yeah, SBO. Remember when you brought in Zombot Charmy, who helped destroy the old place? Good times. In a funny way, the restoration got some measure of payback. When Sheep Girl Page's jewel, it affected Vector's headphones. Yep, penciler Adam Bryce Thomas is here. The Sonic Eggman fight that bookends the issue would be considered lighthearted compared to the real threat that's coming. The beginning portion also served as exposition to get readers up to speed on the Zeddy situation. Overall, the setup issue moves at a somewhat decent pace. That said, it also feels like it ended too soon. As soon as I got to that last page with Sonic, I was like, is that it? Also, is it just me, or did Ian subvert the usual repetitive nature he tends to do? We see two instances of Zavik arriving at a town, attacking it, and reacquiring a team member. Then, suddenly, the other half of the group show up to save time. Things change again with their plan to attack at least one more town before doubling back to attack Restoration HQ, instead of revenging themselves with the other two locations. And I am A-OK -okay with a shakeup every once in a while. Things will really shake up next time when the Deadly Six begin their attack on Restoration HQ. See ya then, everyone. Don't worry, Eggman. I think many fans would agree that Baldy McNose here has worn out its welcome.